120 laps. 300 miles of 500 in the 51st Daytona 500. David Stremme was running 10th and appeared like he was headed for pit road when the right rear tire exploded. But Stremme has made repairs and is back on track. Jeff Gordon is the free pass car. Pit roads open. Matt. The 99 of Carl Edwards could see on the big screen that the 12 Stremme had just pulled away. They're going to make a small air pressure change in the right rear. Dick. They count a junior down. He has parked in his pit. The right front tire is over the line. Steve. Dick, Mark Martin said the tire lasted, but I hate to drive it this way. One round in the left rear, Krista. The field has been chasing the Joe Gibbs Racing Toyotas, and they have been chasing the weather. Cheers erupted when that caution came out. They knew they were ready for tires, four tire change for both cars. Now, they're going to hold that 88 car. <laughs> they are. Because they went ahead and made the pit stop at that right front tire on the line. Second mistake of the day for that group. The about line the fourth this week. The line is out of bounds. The right rear is the only tire allowed to be on or over the line. Here's Junior coming in, and he's way outside where the signboard was. And you see the official motioning. You're not in the box. So you will sit there and serve a penalty. One, One lap. lap. Yikes. Getting ready for green. Aerial coverage brought to you by DirecTV. Now get over 130 of your favorite channels in high definition from DirecTV. Well, we're going to have about 77 laps to go. We know that teams can make it on one more stop for fuel, but it just seems like we get to about that 25 lap mark. That's where we're, we're flirting with possible tire issues. Not for everybody, just for somebody that doesn't have their few. car just right. Pace car peels off, and we're set to restart the Daytona 500 with 77 laps to go, as Larry pointed out. Now, there are some cars on the tail end of the lead lap in front of the race leader, who shows as Elliott Sadler with Reed Sorensen, then Kyle Busch, Matt Kenseth, and Carl Edwards. Sorensen driving the famed number 43 that Richard Petty took to victory lane here seven times. And all of those cars are cars that had made green flag stops prior to that caution. Boy, Brian Vickers, Dale Earnhardt Jr., that ain't oh, going to work, boys. Vickers hard. Here With we go. Kyle Busch, the dominant car of the day in the wall. That was wrong. And That's 10 it. cars sliding, slamming into the infield. Jimmy that Johnson, totally uncalled for. Totally. I don't care who you are. That was just wrong. Caution is out. McMurray was a contender. He's all torn up. And the dominant car of the day, that of Kyle Busch, is a victim of this pileup. Let's look first from the direct TV blimp. This is the result of a driver that's a little frustrated. All right, there's Brian Vickers. There's Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the 88 right up there at the front on the inside. Coming off two down the back straightaway. Junior gets a good run. Vickers puts a little block on him. And then you be the judge. Let's reiterate the rule. You are not allowed to advance your position below the yellow line. If you are forced below the yellow line, you must come back up and blend in. Vickers puts the block on him, and then Junior just turns right back into the racetrack, right in the left rear, Brian Vickers. Saw a similar situation like that yesterday uh, in the uh, nationwide race. And the results are a good eight to ten race cars torn up. Now Vickers makes a legal move coming down to block Dale Jr. But instead of blending in, Junior caught the back end of Vickers Toyota. And of all the cars in that crash, you have to feel for Kyle Busch. He had led 88 laps, far more than anyone else today, but his number 18 is junk. 
just all of this uncalled for mainly with 75 laps to go in this race. Let's ride with Junior. Gonna push you. On the bottom three wide. Two outside, two outside there. Go low, go low, go low. There you go, good job. Jimmy Johnson's view. Outside, no help. Out, in and out, in and out, in and out. Hardware. With Denny Hamlin. There's a big pile up back there, Mike. And finally, here's what Digger saw. cars were involved any Hamlin as well and I guess Daryl what I would say putting a block like that on someone with 75 laps to go I don't know that I agree with that but that I don't agree with the car just turning off the uh, below the line just turning in the left rear of another car no I, I, that's that's the thing I didn't like I mean yeah Vickers put a big move on Dale Jr. and uh, and that's legal you can do that and that's why we have a double yellow line back there what I think was a misjudgment if you want to call it that was when Junior came up and clipped the back of the 83. Uh, could be that, a lot of that, that could have been avoided. Could have been a lot of frustration on his part for what's been a bad day. Vickers aggressively blocked Dale Earnhardt Junior. Both those cars were one lap down. Right. They were both trying to stay in the free pass position if another ca caution came out. Ordinarily, you might not race each other that hard at this point in the race. Exactly. But Vickers is trying to either get on the back on the lead lap or stay in the lucky dog position. He ended up very unlucky. And it's easy enough to blame Junior. But Junior was probably trying to just squeeze right back in behind Vickers and not lose any more time than he needed to. But that was just a bad call, a bad move on his part. Who did get the free pass? There is none because the driver who would have been eligible was involved in the wreck. No free pass. We saw a similar incident yesterday in the nationwide race. Jason Leffler tried to squeeze in behind uh, Little Wallace and he clipped him, and turned him into fence. 73 laps to go. What'll happen next? A lap or so away from a restart. Here's our Ford Drive One moment. 1992. Davey Allison, Morgan Shepard, a Ford 1 2 in the Daytona 500. Allison led all but five of the final 102 laps in winning the Great American Race with Larry Mack as crew chief. There's our top Ford right now. Matt Kenseth in third. Want to win a Ford Fusion? Log on to WeRaceYouWin.com to see how. Matt? Mike, we've caught up with Kyle Busch making his way back to the hall, or what happened? Not real sure. Just, um, you know, some guys having some bad days and uh, not doing their best out there. Just made their bad day our bad day, and, uh, you know, we had a problem. So it's just a shame, you know, that M&M's Toyota was so, so strong today and led all those laps and was running up front just uh, playing with my teammate there and had a great time. Just unfortunate that, uh, you know, two guys got together that were a lap down that were fighting over nothing. All right. Thank you, Kyle. Yep. Dick Bergen. How disappointing is it Dick, right now? Jamie McMurray sits in his car in the garage. Mechanics have a lot of work to do. One of the brackets that holds the steering onto the car has torn loose from the chassis. Jamie, you had such a good day, ran in fourth spot all day, but it's over. What did it look like to you inside the car? I'm not real sure that you, know, you can't really see anything except for the guys in front of you and and uh, the line just wouldn't go and you know I was getting run into from the back and I'm hitting the guy in front of me and uh, just I, it looked like someone got spun around the front but uh, it's a really good day for the Crown Royal Ford Fusion it's uh, you know it drove really well really uh, awesome horsepower that we had this weekend from from Yates and all those guys just uh, you know sometimes it's not your day he thought he could win the race Krista 
from work in the garage to work on pit road. Kyle Busch's teammate, Demi, Denny Hamlin, and the FedEx Toyota team going to work. They say the guts are okay, meaning the steering, the suspension, it's the cosmetic and aesthetic damage. You see the team working there. Car chief Spider Gillen, Chris Gillen, trying to add some braces, some splitter braces for support. And they're also worried the motor's running just a little bit hot. Well, of the guys we've talked to, I don't believe I've ever heard more philosophical guys. <laughs> One of those days. The other day, I took a, a 2010 Ford Fusion Hybrid over to Deland. 70 on the highway through town, 55 back on uh, US 92, 44 miles to the gallon for the round wow. trip. So, uh, you want to win a Ford Fusion? Log on. You know, as I watch what happened on the back straightaway right there. Uh, it almost kind of reminded me a little bit of the last lap at Talladega back in 2006 with those two players involved. A little bit of an opposite results. Brian Vickers went on to win the race, and the other guy that was involved in that last lap situation at Talladega was this guy right here, Jimmy Johnson, in the 48 car. I think Steve has an update on Jimmy. Well, Mike, he, he's trying to make the most of a frustrating day. They've had him on pit roads. So they can see if there's any damage to the splitter after that long slide. But after the slide, he said to Chad Canals, hey, did you see me? I did a cool 360 and got going again. And Chad said, yeah, pretty cool. We'll show you Jimmy's view of what happened. A few sprinkles around the racetrack. So it's going to be a lap or so before we go back to green. You're watching the Daytona 500 on Fox.